and Sunday, August 5th, the now annual Tour de Bleu 150km charity ride took place between Muskoka and Milton, Ontario. The ride's founder, Peter Gilgan of Matamé Homes and the High Power Les Domestiques Club who organised the ride, picked Milton as the ride's destination for a very special reason. This year, all proceeds go to the Milton Velodome project and this year, participants raised a whopping $550,000 towards the project. A group of young Team Ontario riders joined the ride into Milton and had a chance to ride alongside cycling legend George Hincapi. After the ride, we caught up with George and he praised the ride's worthwhile cause for cycling development. Just finished a nice 150 kilometer ride. Great group of guys, um, passionate about the sport of cycling and passionate about increasing awareness of the sport here in Canada. Uh, for me, it's an honor to come and help them out with that and uh, the, the, the 2012 Tour de Blue has been a, a hit as were the other years. Um, this year in particular, it's benefiting the, the uh, uh, facility here in Milton with the with the velodrome as you know and um, it sounds like a super exciting project and this is kind of the uh, the building blocks of getting it done so this event is all about raising money for the new velodrome in Milton as you probably heard uh, for the 2015 Pan Am Games we have a chance to build a game changer for the sport of cycling uh, here in Ontario right in Milton it's a 40 million dollar facility uh, and this is just a down payment on that facility. We raised 550 thousand dollars today towards the remaining four million dollar goal. Our ask is that all members of the Ontario Cycling Association get involved and chip in. This isn't just about track cycling, this is about changing the sport in our country. I wouldn't be standing here today if Tim hadn't corralled a bunch of us and said we have a once in a lifetime opportunity to make a difference here. And Tim, being who he is, wasn't thinking just about elite sport. He thought about it in bigger terms. And if you look at what happened in England, and we see all these wonderful gold medals that they produced, that didn't happen because they simply put more money in the program or they um, hired better coaches. They built facilities. And I think Manchester was a great example of that. But what's happened there and what we're hoping to have happen here is that by producing world-class athletes, bringing home Olympic gold, it's raised the profile of cycling to such an extent in England that now cycling has become an intrinsic part of British culture. And if any of you, any of you have ridden roads in England 25 years ago, you would know that England was not a very cycling-friendly country for many, many years. Now, town council in London is actually leveraging cycling to reduce congestion in London. So it's become top of mind. And that's why this project is so critical. It's not only to give a, a, a future training uh, ground for these incredible young athletes here, it's not only for producing world-class athletes on the stage, but it's about advocating and increasing the prevalence and acceptance of cycling in this country, which I think is gonna be benefit all of us. All right, good afternoon. My name is Malcolm Ead. I'm on the OCA board as Vice President of Finance and Administration. I'm surrounded here by some of Ontario's finest excuse me, young athletes. We're here wrapping up a um, fundraising initiative at the town of Milton. Uh, big thank you and shout out goes to Peter Gilligan and the Tour de Blue crew who raised over $550,000 for the Milton Velodrome as part of the 2015 Pan Am Games initiative. Uh, it truly is an exciting day for cycling in Ontario. I think what we're going to see from this facility, as we've seen most recently with the uh, Great Britain team winning, uh, nine out of, winning nine medals in nine out of ten track events at the Olympics that closed today. They won seven golds and a bronze and a silver. A total of 17 track athletes for the Great British team won, uh, won, an, won a uh, medal on the track. I think it goes back, if you see what facilities do as legacy for development of sport in a country, goes back to the UK's investment in the Manchester track a number of years ago and hosting, not only was it a world-class facility, but they hosted a great number of international events year after year under the Revolution Series. And as a result, you now have the most dominant nation on, in the, on the track in the world. I think if you go back to the 2000 Olympics in Sydney, you also see the Australians dominated because of their investment in facilities. 
another example of how facilities make a difference. In 1988, we had the Olympics in Calgary and built a speed skating oval. And now Canada is one of the more dominant nations in speed skating on, in the planet. So a great, exciting day for cycling for the future in, in Canada. We're going to attract uh, events and athletes from all around the world. And uh, we'll obviously have a lot of families and, and young athletes moving into this area. And I look forward to some great, great results on the track in international events for years to come from Canada. Stay tuned for more developments and fundraising activities as the January groundbreaking date approaches.